Greetings, Inquisitor. Today's Holocron is going to discuss the Journey Guide. With so many different ways out there to dominate the holotable, we need some method to determine which of these characters is the most efficient and effective to build, especially in the early game where we don't have that many rare resources to give out in unlocking characters. Sometimes people refer to these as farming guides where they show you uh, a route to unlock different characters in the journey guide. And that's nice, but why? It's not really telling us just because a character is easy to unlock whether or not it's any good or whether it's the right decision to make to unlock that character first just because it's easy. And you don't win the game by farming out everything in the farming guide. If you just pick one after another and farm out all these characters and you don't bother to build up the teams around them or properly support the characters that you build, your account's still not going to be very effective. So when you select your projects, we need to have some kind of guide that says which projects are the most effective for where we're at with our account today. Journey characters, uh, a lot of them are leaders. And in order to make a leader character work, you have to build the right team around that character. Sometimes the event itself requires characters that can help form the team. In other cases, the character is unlocked by characters that are completely irrelevant to that character itself. There are other characters like C-3PO and R2-D2 that can only go into a team. They can't really lead a team or make, their, make a team on their own. So we need to figure out how to evaluate these characters. And resources in the game are always split between building a new team and working on and finishing out the teams that you already have um, to Relic level, for example. Finishing one of your current teams is just as important as starting a new one. So remember that when you're picking these journeys, when you start on a journey, finish it. Don't start and go halfway and leave your characters and start another one. For example, if you build a Jedi Knight Revan team, you may want to relic two or three characters off of that team and then work on your next journey guide. That's fine. You don't have to take five characters to relic level and make, you know, relic seven everything before you consider yourself to be finished. But get that team to a stopping point where you're satisfied with its power, with what it's doing for you in the game, and how it's winning in Grand Arena, for example, and keep building it till you're done. Don't just keep starting new projects for the sake of unlocking them. So what's important to say when we're building this guide, this is meant to help players understand for each event how hard is this journey event and is it worth it when I get this character or ship or whatever comes out of the event. When starting a new project, this guide should help you select the best one that your account is ready to work on. This is meant to analyze efficiency, so it's just what's the highest impact on your account relative to the investment required. It's not just which character is most powerful. It's also not right and wrong. There's if you I've divided it up into tiers, which you'll see in a moment, but if you pick something at the lower tier to unlock first, it's not wrong. You don't have to do them in any specific order, uh, so that's not what I'm saying. This is just a guide as to, again, how effective it's going to be to proceed with that journey. In order to rate each character, we've given them three ratings, and the, each rating is relatively complex because it has to take a lot of information into account. But basically... We're starting out with the requirements rating. So this is a combination of how hard is it to qualify for the event? What teams do you have to build? Do those characters have to go to relic level? Do they need Zetas? And it's also, is that team useful once it's completed? Or do you complete the uh, journey event and then that team is no longer useful? So that all goes into calculating the, the requirements rating. So the higher it is, the harder it is to qualify for the event. And the less useful, for example, that the teams might be when you complete them. The second number that we give is the character itself and building a team around it. So if it's, uh, for example, General Skywalker, you have to meet the requirements which are difficult to meet. And then once you have General Skywalker built, you still have to build a team around him with the 501st clones if that's what you want to do. So that takes more resources and relic level uh, materials 
and zetas and, and materials. So you would expect a very high score uh, because it's very difficult then to build that team up that Skywalker wants to be in charge of. The power is represents the impact that that character has on your account um, in total. So it's a combination of PvP, Grand Arena, Squad Arena, those kinds of things where you're playing against players, of PvE, which is, uh, you know, Conquest, Galactic Challenges, anything like that where you're playing against the game mode itself. And flexibility uh, plays in there a lot. And then also whether or not it's a long-term character. So some of these characters... Uh, could have been more powerful when they were first released, and then as time goes by, there's more counters introduced to them. And some of these teams were good a long time ago. They're still good. They're still relevant. They still make one of the top teams in the game. So those teams are going to get a higher power rating because there definitely seems to be some sustainment. So just to recap that real quick, requirements rating, the higher the rating, the harder it is to qualify for the event and complete the event for character and teams the higher the rating is the harder it is to build up that character and the team to make that character shine at its best for power high is better a high power character is better than a low power character so taking that all into account and with support from some key members from my dark council over on the discord which if you haven't joined join up on that discord it's a fun community over there and guys like this to help you out when you, when you have something. And we're going to go through every one of these characters, so don't worry that the font here is really small. But I just wanted to show the method that we used, and we kind of rated each character, went through it bit by bit, and ironed it out until there were some clear tiers, and then we divided it up into four tiers. And again, this is based on efficiency, not necessarily how much we like the character or things like that. So the most efficient character rating in the game is SLKR, according to the way that we did it. And it's simply because he has very challenging requirements. It requires fleet. You have to build the finalizer as a capital ship. There's a lot of relic characters that you need to have to qualify. But the leftovers from this uh, build are okay, and you could still use them in other areas of the game. Territory battles, uh, territory war for defense, for example. So the leftovers make an okay team. And um, the Galactic Legend himself uses a lot of Zetas, and he's hard to build. But as far as putting a team around him, you build the team you need as requirements for the event. So you're in pretty good shape. Once you've got the team built, uh, you just put that in with the Galactic Legend, and you've got one of the most effective teams in the game right now. Also, as a finished character, he's very flexible, he's very powerful, he scores well in raids, he can do PvE content, complete galactic conquest uh, things. and so, so overall, he's probably the most powerful and most flexible character. So the payout, even though it's a very difficult and challenging to get the requirements, uh, definitely worth it at the end. Darth Malak is also a highly efficient character. And uh, it, he does, again, have very challenging requirements. You have to build both Jedi Knight Revan and Darth Revan requirements to get started. But, um, but we do take the requirement score down a bit because you're developing two very good teams along the way to qualifying for Darth Revan by getting the Jedi Knight Revan and Darth Revan. So that, that's taken into account. Malak does require guild event tokens to finish out, and that makes him, as a character quite difficult to complete, but he doesn't even need a team. You can solo things with Malak. You can put him in with the Darth Revan team. Uh, you can put him in with the Galactic Legend. He's plug and play for a lot of different things in the game. So the team requirements are very low. He's useful as soon as you build him. Overall, he's very powerful as a tank. And uh, as we said, he can solo things in Grand Arena. Grand Admiral Thrawn also calculated out to be very efficient. The Phoenix aren't that great of a team, but they're easy to build, especially early game, and they can be useful pre-85, and the event itself is not that hard to beat. So building up your Phoenix to a level where you can get Thrawn isn't that difficult. And again, like Malak, you don't really have to build a specific team around Thrawn. You can plug him in a lot of different places. And his power level is very high. He's got a power rating of 6, which in, in our rating system, a power level of 6 is, is quite high. 
Uh, he gets that rating because of the game mechanics around Fracture. And that's why he's a plug-and-play character. You put him in different teams pretty much just for the ability to fracture another character and uh, take them out of the game for a little while. So his usefulness, especially in counters to Galactic Legends and things like that, is legendary. So uh, getting him unlocked and getting him built is quite an efficient thing to do. Padme Amidala also comes out as a very high efficiency. Uh, you can unlock her with Geos. The Geos are an excellent team. They're good to build. They're used in a lot of different game modes. So even though the team itself isn't that easy to build, you do have to get them to seven stars, and it takes a little bit of effort. The, the payout is you're already getting a team that's standalone, good on its own. You probably want to build it anyway. So in those terms, the requirements are, are easy. Uh, the team requirements, she does require a good team to be built around her. Anakin, Ahsoka, and Kenobi are the core three other characters that you want. But uh, Ahsoka is a shop character. Anakin's from Cantina, and Kenobi's from Raids, and you'll get him eventually. So not that hard of a team to build around her. It does require quite a few Zetas to work effectively, though. So we take that into account, and we say it's... Not easy to build a team around her, but it's easy to qualify for her. So at the end of the score, what you find is that overall the power is pretty high. It's a flexible team, and it's remained powerful for a long time. It's got a lot of um, uh, mechanics that make it very useful for attacks out of turn, so there will always be a place for this Padme team uh, as an offensive team, and it stands up pretty well even to this day as a defensive team. Genonite Revan, similarly... Um, it's pretty much reverse uh, as Padme. So here we have a little harder requirements to meet. We do have four hard node characters, although those characters are represented on two different hard nodes, so it's not quite as long to farm these out if you want to commit to it. Uh, two of the characters aren't that great. So it is a little less appealing to build the requirements for Jedi Knight Revan, but once you get him, uh, you can work with pretty much any Jedi. So... You'll have four Jedi pretty easily from just about anything you do in the game. Uh, just putting them with Jedi Knight Revan already makes a decent team, and uh, you can have him up and running. And this team, like Padme, has maintained its viability for a long time, so it's still a great team. And because of the mechanic where Revan can ignore Taunt and Mark and get the characters behind enemy lines, uh, we believe that this character is going to be relevant for a long time to come in the game. Again, a highly efficient character to farm up. Sith Eternal Emperor does make it as the last of the A-tier characters to farm up. He has difficult requirements. It, there's a ship in there and a bunch of relic characters that you have to build. But several of the requirements for C already make good teams on their own. So true, you can make a trooper team from the requirements here. You can make a Sith team. You've got Empire teams with Vader. So you, you do get quite a few effective characters with the Sith Eternal Emperor. And uh, for the character himself, he does typically require a character like Wat Tambor or the Mandalorian Armorer to help put him over the top as a solo character. Uh, but for the rest of the team, you could just surround him with Sith that you already built as part of the requirements for unlocking him. So it's not that hard to build an a okay team uh, to go around the Sith Eternal Emperor. And you can go out of your way and build a better and better team, but but he, can, uh, he basically requires one excellent support and then a few other characters that you may already have. Overall, he's a great offensive character, not that great on defense. The AI doesn't play him that well, and players can pick that team apart pretty easily, and he's vulnerable to things like troopers, so not a great pick for defense, but good at offense, good at territory wars, territory battles, things like that, and conquest game mode. Going into the B tier, we have Jedi Knight Luke. The requirements on Luke are severe. You need Wampa and Hoda, and those are both built with guild event token currency. And there's no way to rush this event. You pretty much get time-gated behind getting enough currency to unlock the characters to meet the requirements for Jedi Knight Luke. So if you're a player that's new to the game and you say, I just want to rush Jedi Knight Luke, you're not going to rush Jedi Knight Luke. There's no way to pay for it. There's no way to rush it. You have to build these characters over time and, and get him unlocked. 
Now, that said, um, once he gets built, you also have to put the right kind of team around him. And if you are, maybe you already have the characters that you want to put around him, but he's going to steal characters from another good team, or he's just going to simply join a Revan team, for example. Uh, so we, we, we did give him a relatively high team requirement because he's pulling away from other teams, which are you know, requiring resources to be built. Moral of the story is it's a very high power character and it's definitely worth it to get this character. It just falls off a little bit of on efficiency because you do have to wait for it and you have to be patient and get those requirements met. And if you do want to do a Malik or a Skywalker, General Skywalker, that's going to take away from your ability to also do the Wampa and, and Hermit Yoda. So just be aware that this is more of a later game unlock. Galactic Legend Ray, compared to Supreme Leader Kylo, her requirements are similar. She has a fleet that requires the capital ship Radis to be unlocked at five stars and many relic characters. However, unlike Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, the characters that are required for the event aren't as useful. Uh, the leftover team is not as good. And the best Ray teams do need other characters. So with SLKR, you've basically already built a team for him as part of the requirements. With Ray, you may still need to build other characters outside of the requirements to make her best team. That said, she's a very strong character in PvP. She also can score decently well in the challenge tier Rancor raid. So definitely a worthwhile character, very powerful and overall quite efficient to build. Jedi Master Luke Skywalker, currently the hardest character in the game to build. Again, uh, we just talked about Jedi Knight Luke, and he's part of the requirements to get Jedi Master Luke. So again, this character is very hard to qualify for. And when you do build a team, he's typically going to steal good characters from other teams that you may already have built. So his team requirements uh, aren't very simple either. That said, he is a very powerful and durable character, and he has a unique combination of damage skills and a lot of ability block and control in the team, and the game is not going to stop building Jedi. We have to assume that there definitely will be more Jedi in the future, so out of all the Galactic Legends, Jedi Master Luke Skywalker definitely has the potential uh, for the most future growth to continue to be a more and more powerful character as time goes on. Next we have Darth Revan. Similar to Jedi Knight Revan, it takes specific event characters and most of those characters are not very good and don't form a good team. Um, it does require, uh, to build Darth Revan himself, it requires Zeta. It also requires very good mods because you need at least Darth Revan and probably also Bastila Shan Fallen to be fast. Uh, so you have to have good mods in addition to uh, building the character and putting the Zetas on. We did this power rating without Malak. Um, and again, if we put Malak into this team in the same place as Darth Revan, then his stats would start to look very bad because of all the requirements for Malak and how difficult he is to build on top of it. So we just say on his own, Darth Revan is a power of six. If you add Malak in, it adds to the difficulty, but it also increases the power rating of the final team if that's where you choose to use Malak. Again, it's not a, a question of whether Darth Revan is better than Jedi Knight Revan. It's simply that it's so easy to put a team around Jedi Knight Revan that he's more efficient to build early in the game. Grandmaster Yoda, uh, the requirements for him are very easy. You're going to have Jedi at some point. You just need to get them to seven stars to get him to seven stars. And the event itself is very easy, so you'll have no problem qualifying for this event at some point and getting Grandmaster Yoda unlocked at full stars. With that in mind, it does require a Zeta and you have to have a decent Jedi team uh, for him to be effective, mostly because it's very hard to keep Grandmaster Yoda alive. So you do need to have either tanks in the team that can protect him or a way to keep him alive like Jolie Bindo, and that takes quite a bit of resources to put around him. You can't just put him on any team and expect him to be wildly successful. The foresight and buff stealing abilities are on uh, Grandmaster Yoda are definitely unique in the game. 
and those continue to be relevant, and we assume that they will continue to be relevant for a long time to come. Uh, so the overall efficiency for Yoda is good and super easy to qualify for. Similar with Emperor Palpatine, he's easy to get with almost any Rebel team, but while the, the council members I talked to felt that uh, you, you'll always build a Jedi team for something, it's not necessarily true that you'll always build a Rebel team. So you do have to put the effort into building a relative Rebel team to qualify, and whether that's the Phoenix or another Rebel team, um, it doesn't matter. It's still very easy to qualify for the event. You know, we have a requirements rating of two here to say that it's, it's very easy to get him. Um, the character itself doesn't shine unless it's surrounded by other good characters like Vader, Thrawn, perhaps Bastila Sean Fallen if you don't have the Darth Revan going yet. Uh, his leadership skill is very powerful, mostly for other characters to use. He does have stun, um, but the kit for the character himself is, is limited. He's not, the, he's not the most impactful of journey guide characters, but overall he's pretty efficient just because he's easy to get and you can put him in a bunch of different teams and he does have some usefulness uh, pretty early on. Moving down to the C tier, we've got General Skywalker, and it's a bit frustrating for some um, for some of the council members to see Skywalker rated this low. Now, remember, this doesn't mean that he's not a powerful character. It doesn't mean that he's bad. It just means that if you look at it overall, the requirements to build this team are steep. You need the Separatist droids, and they have to be quite high level to complete the event. It's a difficult event. It requires many relic level characters spread out over several different factions. And it's really not a top tier team anymore. The the Grievous and Droids are, are okay, but it's not a top tier team at this point. So pretty steep requirements. And then once you get the character himself built, he requires the Guild Event Token 1 currency to finish the character, as well as you still have to build the clones to go around him, the 501st. So overall, even after you get the character unlocked at five stars, it is a long road to get a full, effective General Skywalker in 501st. We also discussed the fact that he's plug-and-play, that you could use him with one other character in solo things, or you could just plug him into a different Jedi team. But some people with more experience said, look, that's not really the way it works out. That's not really what you do with him. If you save him on offense, you have to save the clones with him so that if you do need the full team, you have it, and maybe you can underman it. But for sure, in events and conquest and things like that where you use Skywalker, you'll typically want him in his 501st team to be most effective. So overall, we said, look, very powerful character, very influential, makes a huge impact on your account. But just because it's so many resources to qualify for the event and then so many resources to get the right team built, uh, he ends up being very inefficient. And what that mostly means, it's not really a, a good strategy to go for him right away early game. If you've already built C-3PO and you've already got some of the requirements met and you've already worked on Grievous because you've got Malevolence perhaps, if, if some of those things are already going on in your account, it makes the qualifications much easier to meet, and then it's time to go for Skywalker. C-3PO, similarly, Ewoks have to be built. This is a difficult event, relatively speaking. Uh, most people do believe that you need the Zeta on Chief Chirpa to make it work without having to gear up the other Ewoks even more. And once you have that team built, the Ewoks are just not very good at other stuff. You can put them as a defensive team, in Grand Arena, but they don't hold against much, and they're not very useful in offense, uh, offensive things or in conquest game modes and things like that. So, it's a it's a not a hard not a hard team to build, but not very rewarding and takes quite a bit of resources. C three PO himself is not a leader or a character that stands alone. You really have to put him on a few specific teams, like with Padme in the. Galactic Republic or with Rebels. So you do have to have the team that goes around him already built. And in both cases, whether that's a CLS team or a Padme team, it does require another journey character with their own requirements. So the team requirements around C-3PO are, are mid-range. They're not impossible, but you do have to build a team that he goes on to. 
That said, his power rating is mainly on the fact that he helps other characters shine so much, uh, as the character itself doesn't uh, doesn't mechanically change the game for you, but he definitely makes those teams much better in his support role. R2-D2, very easy to get with any Empire characters, and much like we said before with Jedi, uh, you'll have Empire characters for one reason or another. You'll have, you'll have enough Empire characters. The event's very easy to beat. So you will get an R2-D2. Um, once you get the character himself, he's very flexible. He's got tons of different tags to go in many different teams. But once you get playing the game, you'll find out, let's say you put him as the fifth character on a Padme team, but C-3PO is better in that slot. If you put him on a Rebel team, there's other characters that are better in that slot. Uh, if you put him on a Resistance team, uh, potentially there's other characters that are better in that slot. So he's flexible, but he's not the best in his role. So we gave him a, a little bit lower power rating just to, just to say that he's not, he's not easy to use and you do have to put him in the right kind of team. Commander Luke Skywalker, I think some people are going to be surprised to see him this far down. The characters that are required to unlock him are easy to get, but three of the characters are pretty bad. Stormtrooper Han can be okay in the right circumstances, but Farm Boy Luke and Leia are just not good characters to have to build up and build out. And you don't have to gear them up very well, but they're, but they're going to stop as soon as you get the event unlocked. And then those aren't characters that go with Luke. So the team requirements are also high. You have to put up to three Zetas on CLS. You need um, Han Solo and Chewbacca that are both event characters also. So this is not an easy team to build. It's not something that uh, for an early game player is just as easy as saying, okay, I want to get a CLS team up and running. Because then you have to build bounty hunters to get your Chewbacca. You, you have to build a lot. So the, the team requirements are pretty steep. That said, the team has remained relevant and powerful for a long time. And we only gave him a power rating of 5. Remember, Revan is only 6 because you still have to leave room for Galactic Legends that are only an 8. So overall, this um, uh, CLS is quite a powerful team. It's still relevant. It's worth the payout. So that just gives you an idea of the overall efficiency. Chewbacca, similarly, he requires a bounty hunter as a team to get him, and that event is notoriously um, random. <laughs> so you don't have to build up a huge bounty hunter team to get it unlocked, but you do have to get him to seven stars, and um, the best thing to do is to build, of course, a bounty hunter team that will also be good and useful bounty hunter team on its own so that you'll get the unlock, but you also get a, a good team behind it. Uh, for the team itself, again, similar to CLS, it just requires a lot of other characters that are journey characters and not easy to build. And Chewbacca does have a guard mechanic that makes him a little more plug-and-play. You can put him in somewhere just to use his guard mechanic. And that's where a lot of his power comes from, is his ability to, to guard uh, two characters on his team. Well, Han Solo plus one other character. BB-8 requires first order. Uh, and that's not too difficult. Uh, plugs into a bunch of different teams, but you need to have him in a team that's pretty good to take advantage of him. And in order to build that team, it's going to be different characters than what you used for the event. So we put the team requirements kind of in the middle. And then we said overall, the power level is not uh, its not that great. So he's got a mechanic to make droids go fast, which is okay, but it's not game-breaking. He's got uh, the ability to you know, buff his own team and pass around some turn meter and uh, ultimately get to a huge buff that, that helps put your team over the top. But the moment you unlock BB-8, he doesn't change the way the game plays for you. He doesn't change how far you can go in conquest. So overall, his power level as a support is, is less than some of these other support characters. And that specifically because his power rating is pretty mediocre, then he falls quite a bit in his efficiency. So he's easy to get. You can make use of him, but he's not hes not great. Last tier, the D tier, and these are journey guide characters and ships that we feel really aren't efficient. The Chimera, for example, requires Phoenix ships. You'll stop building the Phoenix characters, and those Phoenix ships will stagnate and not become great ships. They're not bad to have, but they're, they're never going to be 
top-notch fleet uh, because you're probably not going to gear up your, your Phoenix. The Executrix as a capital ship is very similar. It's easier. You get it for free anyway. So that's the, the challenge with Chimera, with the extra capital ships that have been introduced in the game with the Finalizer, the Radis, the Negotiator, and the Malevolence. There are other ways to get more options to get fleet. So we feel like just use the Executrix, the Chimera is not worth the effort to, to build for the payback that you get. That said, it's not a horrible ship, and there are some teams that function very well under the Executrix, and the Bounty Hunters work better with the Executrix than most other capital ships. And if the Razor Crest turns out to be an awesome game-changing ship, we may see a Bounty Hunter fleet with Thrawn as the capital ship, as the Chimera of the capital ship. So that may change in the future, but overall right now, not that it's a bad ship, it's just not an efficient investment. Hans Millennium Falcon requires a Bounty Hunter fleet to unlock, which requires Bounty Hunters to pilot, and they're not the best Bounty Hunters with Cad Bane and IG-88, uh, for example. So those ships and those Bounty Hunters, uh, the ships especially, are of limited usefulness, and to build a full Rebel fleet is a massive investment, and right now... You, you've got the Malevolence Fleet, the Negotiator Fleet, the Premium Fleets with Finalizer and Radis that are uh, in the game. And you can build an Equalizer, or, uh, an Executrix and Home One Fleet pretty easily as well. So Millennium Falcon is not as powerful as it once was. The Rebel Fleet is not as much of a requirement as, you know, once you need another fleet, it needs to be Rebels. That's not true anymore. So we're saying overall, look, the Millennium Falcon is a good ship, but maybe if you've already built up the Bounty Hunters, you go for it. But if you haven't built the Bounty Hunters, the idea of building them just to get the Millennium Falcon is very inefficient. Jedi Training Ray ends up down here as well. She requires the resistance to unlock, and the, the characters required are not great characters. Now, in certain teams, the Finn and Poe, can be uh, good. So it's not to say that they're not good characters, but they're just not making a good team on their own so that when you unlock Jedi Training Ray, you get a good team behind it. Building the right team for Jedi Training Ray can be resource intensive. It requires BB-8 usually, and also R2-D2, I think, are a staple to make a good Jedi Training Ray team, um, both of who are also journey characters and, and need their own investments so while this team can be good if you use it defensively it can be pretty easily countered and for example the troopers are an excellent counter to this team and they really take it apart very easily um, and then on offense there is a limited flexibility that you have with what teams this team is good at beating so we said overall, it's a good team to have. And if you just happen to be building toward Galactic Legend Ray, you'll be able to get this. It's not a problem. But just as a standalone journey guide character, uh, either of the Revens, a lot of these other characters are just more efficient than Jedi, Jedi Training Ray, and they're going to be more effective across more game modes. Beskar Mando. Uh, similarly, at the time of this guide, a lot of the farms... To get him going are single shard drops and that makes him uh, very hard to get in terms of requirements once you've got him you have to build up a team around him uh, which also takes a bunch of resources and so far there's no indication that the whistling birds and this mandalorian beskar armor are game changing whatever he does you can pretty much do with other teams already so that may change in the future. Who knows? We may continue to get more Mandalorians, and at some point that may tip this character into being just an awesome, efficient investment. But for right now, he is, he is uh, among the low-efficiency characters in the Journey Guide. There's a bunch of characters in there that aren't mentioned. So Han Solo, Kenobi, Treya. Uh, you don't really have to prepare for those. They don't have prerequisites to meet. You just have to be in a guild to do the raids to get them, uh, for example. So we're not going to put those in the journey guide. And then for Wat Tambor and Kiati Mundi, you are required. You're not required. I mean, you could potentially be in a guild that gets them without you. So 
Um, if you want to get a shard yourself, it does require specific teams, but that's up to you, and it's depending on the guild that you're in. So we didn't include those in the journey guide as a, uh, let's say, an individual choice, especially early game. So closing comments. This information is really meant to help players, and especially new and mid-game players, to understand the challenge, the difficulty of the requirements to participate in the event, and to have some idea of whether or not the payout is going to justify the investment in the event itself. And for new players especially, it should help you pick the most efficient events to do first so that you can make the best use of your hard-earned resources in the game. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to see what you all think, if this journey guide is accurate. If you disagree with the ratings on the characters, I'd love to hear what you think and why you think the character should be in a different tier. So leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more like it in the future, recommend it to other people who you think might learn something from this. Thank you. See you in the next Holocron.